Hi, everybody. I'm Alessandro Nicolao. I'm a beamline scientist at the sextant beamlines of the Synchrotron Soleil. And I will uh, show you today what we do in the, within the Impress project, where we develop within work package 5.4, some Excel platform for soft X to hard X-ray beamlines and correlative. And we implement methodologies to correlate, to correlate rigs, yields, and XIOL and nano cathode luminescence experiment. So this is the outline of my talk. I will start by presenting the six ton beamlines where I work and uh, describing briefly the rigs spectroscopy. Then I will show two examples on research we are developing in where we try to correlate RIGS, EELS, XIOL, and cathode luminescence in HBN and the correlative study work that we did in strontium vanadate. And I, I conclude by showing the perspectives, the new uh, setup for uh, XIOL experiment that we are developing on the galaxy beamline within the IMPRESS project. And I will conclude. So the six time beamline at Soleil is a soft X ray beamline. Is that we have two sources of X rays, so there are two Apple II ondulators that allow us to work in an energy range between 50 and 1.7 kilo electron volt with high flux of photons and the full control of polarization. So this allowed us to do different photon in, photon out techniques. In fact, the beamline is divided into branches. There is one elastic branch where my colleagues do coherent scattering, so they visualize especially magnetic domains in the in the real space by Tychography and holography experiment in the other uh, experiment they visualize in the reciprocal space by doing uh, elastic scattering experiment. Uh, and uh, I will focus today on the inelastic branch where we perform resonant inelastic X ray scattering experiment thanks to the IRA spectrometer. So, what is RIGS? I will describe briefly the RIGS. So RIGS is a uh, second order process is a photon in photon out process. So we have we work at sextant in the soft X ray regime. So we promote this is the formula. I mean we promote the system from a ground state to an intermediate state by absorbing X ray photons incoming from the meme line. So it's a monochromatic photon, and this is a dipole transition in the soft X ray. And then okay, sorry. Okay, so this is the layout of the beamline. Was as I was saying. So these are my colleagues working on the beamline, and so we have two ondulators here. They produce six rays. They are separated in two branches. This is the elastic branch where they perform a resonant uh, elastic X-ray scattering experiment. And today I focus on the inelastic branch here, where we have a spectrometer where we perform. <laughs> so Rix is a second order process, as I said. So we absorb the system. Uh, absorb a photon and X-ray photons coming from a beamline is promoted from ground state into the intermediate state, which is the final state of the absorption. And then there is a coherent, I mean, in the systems that are, uh, where the screaming is not so efficient, we have a coherent uh, second order process. And from this intermediate state, the system can uh, decay in a, and stay in an excited state, and you can measure directly the, the energy of this excitation. So in the soft X-ray regimes, these are two dipole transitions, and there's a second order process. It's element specific because we work on an absorption edge. It's bulk sensitive and not perturbed by magnetic and electric fields, and that I will show you. We developed an operando in station uh, thanks to these properties because we measure photons, so we have a bulk sensitive probe and uh, that we can use for and but it's challenging because the interpretation of the RIGS data there is not still a, a theory which is uh, uh, a ab initial theory to interpret the RIGS data but it's a very powerful technique uh, for especially for the study of uh, correlated system so as I told you you excite through an absorption edge so here I show you the absorption edge of iron in magnetite so it's L3 and L2 edges of iron it's about 710 EV you have the L3 and 720 you have the L2 uh, and uh, you see here for, for in RIGS so this is the absorption spectrum in RIGS for each excitation energy you can have an energy loss spectrum so you, you see it here represented as a color map so where the red is intense and the blue is no signal and here you can see that you have the whole, I mean, the whole picture of the, the, the Raman losses, which are shown here as vertical line following the elastic peak. So they stay a constant energy loss and of the fluorescence that is coming from the band structure of the material. It's widely used, it's an emergent technique, it's widely used because it, as I told you, it gives you the measure of the excitation spectrum of the system. 
and already from uh, rig spectrum you can and from the energy range where you see some structure some feature in the spectrum you can guess if they are phonons magnus you can sense it to measure the magnus the orbitons you can measure the magnon dispersions in this is a measurement they did in cuprates 10 years ago and you can measure orbitons crystal field excitation Hubbard, and the charge transfer excitation so on the inelastic branch of the sextant beam line we focus down a beam of two microns in vertically because this is important for the energy resolution of the experiment and 150 microns horizontally and this is important not to have too much photon density not to damage the sample because we also encounter beam damage uh, and we use the IRA spectrometer to perform rigs in the optic ray range from 50 to 1000 EV. Uh, we have a mean resolution, let's say we have, but we can do a lot of interesting stuff. So we have about 100 milli electron volt overall resolution at oxygen, 200 at iron, 300 at copper, I would say. It's a quite nice instrument. It's quite versatile and we're able to measure also diluted matter <coughs> or mono layers and this is and and uh, small samples and this is very important to correlate to eels because often in eels you measure very small samples that are not accessible for us in rigs or they are difficult to access in rigs so thanks to a collaborative a collaboration a strong collaboration with the lps group with the stem group of the lps laboratory in Saclay. So we uh, recently installed also a, a optical spectrometer in order to perform uh, X-ray uh, excited optical luminescence experiment. So here you, you see the layout of the experiment. So we have the incoming beams from here, they interact with the samples. We have a nice sample environment allowing operando experiment in RIGS and also in XEOL now, which is compatible, I mean, with the XEOL setup. And then if you rotate, the sample holder from one side you can collect rig spectra and 180 degree on the other side you can collect xeol spectra in exactly the same condition so we can correlate the two spectroscopies and these are some first results so you can see on the right side here you can see a rig spectrum where we measure in hbn the direct exit on it's about 6.2 electron volt so we see it this in rigs we see it in uh, eels. These measurements were done at LPS in 2022. So and so we see the energy loss. We they have different cross sections, and this is one of these things to understand. But we see the same the same exciton in this case. And then we can also correlate Lness. So the, the kind of absorption that you can measure in the eels micro in the in the electron microscopes to the X-ray absorption that we measure here in HBN at the Bohr K edge. For the with the two polarizations, so uh, you see here in green the LNS spectrum. So you have the pi star of the Bohr and uh, the other states, and you, we see the same features also in the total electron yield absorption spectra taken by X rays. For sure, with X rays we can profit of the polarization, so we have polarization effects, and then you can select different orbitals, and this you cannot do in yields uh, uh, easily. But uh, we can see the same feature with different cross sections, and so this can be useful to correlate. On the same sample, we can perform now uh, luminescence experiments. So this is still HBN. We build it a setup that we can go from one EV up to six point three EV, and uh, so this allowed us to correlate. <coughs> I mean, rigs and e or luminescence in order to understand the origin of the luminescence and to correlate to the electronic structure. The collaboration between with LPS allows us to also to correlate RICS and EELS because I mean often RICS is not easy to understand and to interpret the data. It's, it's easier. And in some cases, I will show you that we see some features in EELS, but we don't see RICS. And this is due to the different localization of the excitation in the materials. So we have a unique sample environment allowing us to do such an experiment. And we have a strong collaboration with the group of LPS. So here I show briefly the setup. I think Lewis showed this on Monday. So they have a, a, a TEM, so a transmission electron microscope. And mm -hmm. uh, thanks to a development, in-house development, they added the mirror in order to collect also the emitted light from the sample so in that they can correlate yields and uh, cathode luminescence experiment. Mm -hmm. And they can measure nice cathode luminescence. They can measure the yield spectrum and the cathode luminescence. So they, they co can correlate recombination phenomena in, in the stem. And we can do exactly the same by doing RIGS and XEOL now.
So this is an example of uh, correlative studies we perform in HBN. I already show you that we can okay measure the absorption. Here is shown at the Borke edge. Here is shown at the nitrogen edge. So the two elements they can be probed independently. <laughs> We see the same features with different cross sections. We can detect and go back to the orbitals responsible to this by doing polarization effect in RIGS. And we can perform RIGS maps. So here we perform RIGS maps at the Borke edge with the two polarization. We see this, the, the exciton only in horizontal polarization, meaning that you can excite with a component out of plane of the sample. So the, uh, <coughs> in between the, the HBN planes. And we also see that, for example, here, these are represented in energy loss. So here we see only vertical features, let's say features that stay a constant energy loss, which means these are excitonic effect and there's, there are a lot of Raman features at bore, while at nitrogen, we see essentially fluorescence features. So we don't have, we have much less excitonic effect, a more delocalized excitation in uh, even the nitrogen. <clears throat> And we can, as I showed you before, we can also see the same exit on in RIGS and yields. So we can, at the beamline, we can scan through an absorption edge. So we can also, and I said, we have also axial setup. So we can also scan through an absorption edge and measure the photoluminescence. And this is the map I show you here. Mm -hmm. So this is the integral of the photoluminescence. It gives you all the structure. And this is the integral over of the photoluminescence as a function of excitation energy. As you see here, so this map is very different with the, with respect to the RIGS map. Here you see a really resonating effect. You see that there are structures that are appearing at different excitation energies, while here the, the shape is, stays constant, more or less constant. You have just a, a, a reduction of the intensity due to mean free pass uh, problem, mean free pass uh, effects and charging effects. But in any case, we can use this information. You can do the integral of the photoluminescence as a function of the excitation energy, and we can compare this still to absorption spectra. And in particular, we can, this is what Alberto did, I mean, and Laura Susanna did, the peer student of Alberto. We can also, if we know the components of the photoluminescence, we can also calculate the partial photoluminescence seal, and we can go back to the different phases that are in the material, so we can correlate uh, I mean, as in, in the electron microscope, you can correlate because you have a spatial resolution. You can correlate the different phases because you can see them structurally, and you can correlate to cathode luminescence. In in our experiment, we cannot see. We don't have spatial resolution, but we have the element specificity, and so we can correlate different phases by by mean of this kind of of studies. The second uh, example I show you is a work done by Alexander Glotter of LPS on strontium vanadate. So this is. A pro, I mean, a very famous system for correlated systems. It's it's shown a long time ago. Was shown by photoemission that there was question about the the quasi particle at the Fermi eleven and some satellites appearing at higher energy. So it, it is traditionally interpreted these satellites <clears throat> as a transfer of spectral weight from the quasi particle to the satellites due to correlation and is interpreted in the frame of of the Motabar model. Recently, there was a, another interpretation when a calculation, a initial calculation from Matteo Gatti and Guzzo that showed that you can also interpret this as a plasma satellite. So due to simply to interacting electrons that you create by with interaction with the photons and with the electrons. So we tried to, Matteo did some calculation where they predict a plasma at about 1.5 EV. And what is interesting, Alex was able to measure this plasma in EADS, and we tried to measure this in RIGS, but we didn't measure it. We didn't show this in RIGS. And this plasma is useful also for technical application. These are EADS map measured in RIGS. So this shows how these two techniques can be complementary. Sometimes you don't see something in RIGS, not because it's not present, but because maybe it's more delocalized. What we think is that it's more delocalized, so it's not present in RIGS because of the screening, but you can measure for some reason in EADS. So I conclude by showing what we are doing now as technical development within the task 5.4. So we just conceived a new uh, Excel setup for hard X-ray for the galaxy beamline, which is a hard X-ray beamline. So you don't work in vacuum. You have easy, it's easier to work with. So we have more room. So we we conceived this uh, new optical setup where we have X-rays coming from the beamline here interacting with the sample, which is mounted on a small exapod, allows the movement, and we can decouple the movement of the 
uh, optical setup, allowing us to measure the XL and to, with respect to the sample. And this will allow us to do some XL maps with a resolution of about one micron. So this setup will allow us hopefully to do X-ray uh, excited optical microscope. And this is also something which is nice to correlate with colleagues of, of the, with Cataluminas and the colleagues of EELS and the Cataluminas experiment because we, we will add a spatial resolution. And we will uh, soon, I mean, we define the setup of this and we will soon order the pieces and mount and test it uh, and then commission this new setup. So in order to conclude, I, I showed that the elastic branch of Extants, we have unique environment to correlate RIX and XEOL. Then we have strong collaboration with LPS that allowed also to correlate this with uh, EELS and cathode luminescence. With RIX and EELS, you can easily access to high energy neutral excitation. And it's very useful to take advantage of these different probes and these inter different interaction regimes. We are in soft X ray with the dipole transition. Hard X rays, you have also quadrupole transition. And, I mean, you can see different things and different degrees of localization of the excitation. But you also have to pay attention precisely how to correlate. Now we are correlating this. You have different energy calibration between the different techniques. If you want to be precise, you have to really take care of what you are doing and also concerning to the beam damage that we have both in RIGS and this. Uh, we can correlate uh, luminescence to near edge absorption phi structures and uh, uh, so to study excitation this excitation process and to correlate photoluminescence to electronic and crystallographic structure. And in the future, I mean, we, we are also working to implement the possibility to measure uh, these things under magnetic field. We can do it at the sextants. It would be nice to do also, thanks to ICAR, on the EELS microscope, and we can do the commissioning of sextants on this setup. So I would like to thank all the people involved in this work. So people from the Soleil, Victor is doing a postdoc, Carl work on Stones of and uh, Jean Pascal, which is responsible of the Galaxy's Beamline, Alberto Zobelli, which is the responsible of Task 5.4, <coughs> and uh, has a major role here. The people from LPS that, uh, and the transfer of technology for the XL from LPS to Soleil, and Matteo Gatti, which is uh, driving, I mean, uh, partner of this this project because of his calculations and uh, suggestions. Thank you very much for your attention.